One of the most asked questions new investors have is, how do I pick the best stocks to invest in? Well, if there was a simple answer to this, we'd all be millionaires. Okay, if you're Warren Buffett or if you're Jimmy Buffett, nobody knows if the stock is gonna go up, down, sideways, or in circles. While there isn't a secret formula to picking winning stocks, there's a few simple ways to mitigate risk and increase the odds of choosing a good investment. In this video, we're gonna go over some simple steps and things to look for when searching for companies to invest in. So excited, so excited. Also, make sure to stay to the end for some of our common sense investing tips. And while you're here, tap that like and sub button. Let's get started with the first thing you need to do, which is to make sure you understand the company you're investing in. And always remember that you're investing in a company and not a stock. Every investor should have a clear understanding of what the company does, how it makes money, and what industry it serves before investing. Think of it like this. Replace investing in McDonald's stock with investing in one of their restaurants. It has a recognizable brand, and it may seem like a good investment on the surface. But if it was located somewhere without foot traffic or mostly healthy eaters, it may turn out to be a bad investment. Missing important details like location and demographics can turn something that seems promising into something that loses money. And they went bankrupt. If you don't fully understand the company's business model before you invest in it, you're taking a gamble. Whether it's a McDonald's, a stock, or even fine art, understanding the full aspect of what you're investing in is crucial. Comparing a company to its peers is also part of assessing a company. You wouldn't want to compare Tesla to Costco as they're different companies within different sectors. Instead, compare apples to apples to get a better understanding of how each company performs. To do this, you'll want to look at similar companies within a sector and compare things like financials and growth. Industry-leading companies within each sector tend to be safer picks, but if you're looking for stocks with the potential for more growth, you can also look at smaller up-and-coming companies as well. Just remember that this can increase your risk as they're likely not as established as the industry leaders. Moving on to the financials, you're going to want to review a company's 10K report, which can be found on their website under the Investors Relation page or with a simple Google search. The 10K report is a yearly overview of a company's business description and financial performance. This is a great resource to research a company's financial health. Here's Tesla's 10K report. And in the first couple of lines of the business description, we can see that they design, develop, and sell electric vehicles, as well as energy generation and storage systems. From this, we can get a pretty good idea what the company's all about. After reading the business description, take a look at the risk factors section. Here you'll see an outline of some of the risks associated with their company and how they can affect their operations. After reading the business model and risk factors, this is the point where we usually decide if we like the stock or not. If we do, we move on to the financial statements. These include the income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow statements. If you don't understand some of the terms within these financial reports, just do a quick Google search to figure out what they mean. But to keep this video under four hours long, we're just gonna go through some of the most important things to look for. Let's start with the income statement where you're gonna find the company's earnings, which is the net income after expenses. Look for a company's net income to increase year over year as it shows that their profits have continuous growth. A 10% increase is a good benchmark, but it's not always possible with companies that are looking to reinvest their earnings. Next up is the balance sheet, which is simply a snapshot of the company's assets, liabilities, and equities. This is what they own versus the amount of debt they have, plus what they owe back to their shareholders like dividends. To break it down even further, assets are things that companies own like warehouses, vehicles, and inventory to name a few. Liabilities though, on the other hand, are things like wages and taxes. In the end though, assets and liabilities can explain a lot about a company's direction and profitability. To mitigate risk here, you're going to want to look for companies that can cover their liabilities with their assets. If the liabilities outweigh the assets, the companies can't cover its debt and may be on the path to bankruptcy. The last report we need to look at for a basic assessment of a company is the cash flow statement, but more specifically, their free cash flow. This may be one of the most overlooked reports, but it shows how effective the company is at managing cash, what it spends it on, and how much it has on hand. If a company can generate more free cash flow, some useful things they can use it for is to pay things like dividends, make acquisitions, or clear debt. Either way, cash is king, and investing in companies with lots of cash on hand is usually a good idea. Hey. Once you become more comfortable assessing companies, there's other useful metrics you can use. The price to earnings ratio is a popular one, and it's a ratio of how much earnings are generated per share of a company's stock that has been issued. 
This can give you an idea of the value of a company and how much investors are willing to pay for it. You can calculate this very quickly by dividing the price of a stock by the earnings per share from the last 12 months. If we look at Alphabet or Google as an example, we can take their share price of 2,667 and divide it by their trailing 12 month earnings of 105. And this will give us a PE ratio of just over 25, which is generally good for this sector. However, to accurately assess Google, you should compare its current PE ratio to its previous PE ratios, as well as the PE ratios of other companies within its sector. That's a lot of PE ratios. That is. A helpful tool that we recommend is to use the Finviz screener to sort out companies by using their extensive filters. Pro tip, within the screener, you can hover over any filter to get a basic definition of what they are. Spending some time on this site will help you understand some of these terms and how they relate to a stock's performance. This is a great learning tool for beginners when searching for stocks, so we'll leave a link in the description below. As promised, we've got a few other tips to keep in mind while you're trying to find stocks, starting with your risk tolerance. This is probably one of the most important aspects of picking stocks because everyone has different risk tolerances. We recommend only picking stocks that match your risk tolerance. The idea of making huge gains on a speculative stock may seem enticing, but how would you feel if the share price dropped 20 to 30% in a few weeks? Everybody pay! Try and avoid highly speculative stocks or new companies with little to no historical data. Although there can be a possibility for huge gains, the risk usually outweighs the reward. Avoid the hype and don't invest because your buddy Ty gave you a hot stock tip. Want to know a crazy secret? Generally, you want to invest in solid companies for the long term instead of trying to hop on the next popular stock on Reddit. Keep it simple. Stick to companies and sectors that you're familiar with rather than picking companies that you don't understand. Look at the products and services that you use every day and ask yourself, would any of these be a good investment? This is a great way to find companies you're already familiar with. Moving on, don't oversaturate in one sector. You don't need 10 different electric vehicle stocks because if that sector gets hit hard, you may have a difficult time recovering. Always diversify your investment portfolio to mitigate your risk. Also remember, the more time you invest in increasing your knowledge, the better your judgment will be when it comes to picking stocks. Lastly, don't try to time the market. Just dollar cost average into your investments and invest for the long term. That's it for how to pick stocks. Be sure to tune in to our next weekly video. And if you haven't already, be sure to drop us a like and subscribe. Don't be afraid to show us some love. With that said, I'm Mike, he's Max, and we'll see you guys next week. One of the most, nope. <laughs> the more time you invest increasing your... <laughs> <laughs> let's get, let's, ha let's take a quick peek at Tesla's... <laughs> Can't explain a lot about a boat, about a boat. Try and avoid highly speculative stocks. Stocks. To do this, to do this. <laughs> to do this.